Thank you for joining us for Stonington High School's 63rd annual Mother-Daughter Banquet and the first and hopefully last virtual edition. My name is Rosa Maria Berger and I along with Catherine Ellis am one of the senior class advisors. While tonight's event doesn't afford you the opportunity to take pictures at the scenic Latitude restaurant along the Mystic River, you're hopefully able to snuggle comfortably with your mom or daughter on the couch while enjoying a night dedicated to the special bond between you. I've been teaching at Stonington High School for almost eight years now and can say in total honesty that your daughter's grade has been the dearest to my heart. In the spring of 2016, I went out on maternity leave to have my one and only child, my daughter Laura. That fall, when your daughter started a new journey as high schoolers, I was also starting a new journey, that of being a working mom. As your girls grew, so did mine. And as each year my class of 2020 home base moved up a grade, I saw parallels develop in them with my daughter. That first year, it was a year of great growth for both your girls and mine, both finding their footing my girl learning how to walk, and yours gained confidence and learned how high school worked. Their sophomore years, your daughters, knowing the rules of the road at Stonington High School, uh, were able to reach up high and use the skills and tools to be successful. My girl also used her new skills and tools to reach up high, so that's why all the breakable stuff got put up on higher shelves and beige couches were switched out for gray which are much better at concealing spills. Junior year, well, when your girls came back after that summer, they look more like adults and kids. It's amazing to see the difference in just even physical appearance. Similarly, and to the detriment of my bank account, my daughter went through 24 months, 2T, 3T, 4T, 5T, and shoe sizes four through nine that school year. When your daughter spoke, it was with the confidence that only knowledge and experience could provide. When talking to your girls, I felt like I was talking to an adult rather than a kid. During that school year, my daughter started talking more and being able to communicate her needs and wants and wants and wants. Finally, here we are at senior year. At the start of the year, your daughters were already making plans for after high school. Many had already started the college application process and they could feel the tantalizing anticipation of freedom on the horizon. And although you were so proud of them for getting their ducks in a row this past fall, your heart ached at the fact that your daughter may soon no longer be home to say goodnight to every night. This year, my daughter started preschool and it broke my heart sending her there the first day because I knew that she had become, begun her educational journey that will eventually lead her to leave our home as well. I know that I have more time before that happens than you do, but I also know by watching your girls grow that time passes so fast. It is true what they say, that the days are long but the years are short. And man, are those days long when you have to watch Frozen 2 for the third time in a row in a single day. But as we will see in a few weeks, when your not so little girls get their diplomas, the years pass fast. In the past few weeks of social distancing, I have been spending more time reading to my daughter and one of the books, Someday, seem perfect to share at this event, and I'd like to read it to you now. One day, I counted your fingers and kissed each one. One day, the first snowflakes fell and I held you up and watched them melt on your baby skin. One day, we crossed the street and you held my hand tight. Then you were my baby, and now you are my child. Sometimes, when you sleep, 
I watch you dream. And I dream too. That someday you will dive into the cool, clear waters of the lake. Someday you will walk into a deep wood. Someday your eyes will be filled with a joy so deep that they shine. Someday you will run so fast and so far, your heart will feel like fire. Someday you will swing high, so high, higher than you ever dared to swing. Someday you will hear something so sad that you will fold up with sorrow. Someday you will call a song to the wind, and the wind will carry your song away. Someday, I will stand on this porch and watch your arms waving to me until I no longer see you. Someday, you will look at this house and wonder how something that feels so big can look so small. Someday, you will feel a small weight against your strong back. Someday, I will watch you brushing your child's hair. Someday, a long time from now, your own hair will glow silver in the sun. And when that day comes, love, you will remember me. To the young ladies of the class of 2020, I love you and you are all very special to me. Know that you will always have a place in my heart. I know you will find success when you reach for it. And if it doesn't happen the first time, just keep trying. You'll get it eventually. And you know I couldn't finish this speech without bringing some science in. As you all know, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. But did you also know that the mitochondria are passed solely through the maternal bloodline? Which means your mitochondria are the same as your mom's and your mom's mom as far back as history goes. So if you're ever feeling homesick, know that your mother and your grandmother and all of the women in your family's history are with you. And moms, I've got one for you too. Did you know that when that you made every single one of your daughter's eggs while she was within your womb, you carried her and all of her children within your body during your pregnancy with her? And another piece of information for you, moms, is that during each pregnancy, a small number of stem cells from your developing baby can cross the placenta and enter your bloodstream eventually lodging themselves within your organs. Being stem cells, they take signals from the neighboring cells and make themselves into whatever organ cell that they are attached to. This is called a microchimerism, and scientists have been able to find cells belonging to one of a woman's children decades later. So when you are missing your daughter or any of your children, know that they are quite literally a part of you. The mother-daughter bond is so special and so unique, and that is why we're here tonight to celebrate. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you enjoy what we have put together for you.
When my mother was pregnant with her second child, I was four. I pointed at her swollen belly, confused at how my mother had gotten so big in such little time. My father scooped me in his tree trunk arms and said, the closest thing to God on this earth is a woman's body. It's where life comes from. And to have a grown man tell me something so powerful at such a young age changed me to see the entire universe rested at my mother's feet. I just met you Seems like yesterday You opened up your eyes And I recognized your face You know that you're the one That we've been waiting for We're gonna keep you safe First time I held you in my arms I knew I'd love you all the way I took you in at night Another day has passed Every week goes by a little faster than the last It wasn't so long ago We walked together and you held my hand But now you're getting too big to want to But I hope you'll always understand That I'm always gonna lift you up And I'm never gonna let you down No matter what you do I'm forever proud of you I love you forever now I hear it Through your eyes I see A world full of magic Full of possibilities You know as well as anybody How tough this life can be But you've got so much strength inside you A strength I pray you'll never need Time for the mother superlatives. For the mother with the most number of children of five kids goes to Kirsten Elliott, Ava Stepsky's mom. The mother with the shortest labor of zero hours goes to Deborah Gibson, Abby Gibson's mom. The mother with the longest labor of 40 hours goes to Katherine Getlin, Kylie and Caitlin Getlin's mom. The mother with the biggest baby of 10 pounds 10 ounces goes to Laura Wainston, Iris Wainston's mom. The mother with the smallest baby of two pounds and four ounces goes to Candace Anderson, Lily Claire and Emma Anderson's mom. The mother with the oldest child of 35 years old goes to Rebecca Mendez, Sierra Felitti's mom. The mother with the youngest child of four years old goes to Cara Ribeiro, Zoe Ribeiro's mom. The mother with the most grandchildren with five grandchildren goes to Rebecca Mendez, Sierra Felitti's mom. And lastly, the mother with the closest birthday to the virtual mother-daughter banquet with a birthday on May 13th goes to Susan Chapel, Heidi Chapel's mom. If any of you won a superlative, you'll be receiving a gift card to SIFT in the mail in the next few days.
with your loving, there ain't nothing that I can adore. The way I'm running with you, honey, is we can break every law. Find it funny, you're the only one I never looked for. There is something in your loving that tears down my walls. I wasn't ready then, I'm ready now. I'm heading straight for you. You will only be eternally the one that I belong to. The sweetest devotion. Hear me like an explosion. All of my life I've been frozen. The sweetest devotion I Mom says, so who's going to be at this party? What she means is, if you're anything like I was when I was your age, this will not end well. What she means is, do I need to worry? What she means is, please be safe. So, when I'm sitting on the curb with lipstick smeared across my face, and I'm miserable about the whole thing, she picks up the phone on the first ring. The car, filled with heavy silence, she drives us all the way home, and when she pulls into the driveway and turns off the engine, we sit together in the dark, like she knows everything without ever having to ask. Mom says, what flavor of ice cream are we eating tonight? What she means is, which boy made you cry, and do I need to go kick his ass? What she means is, life is tough, but so are you, darling. What she means is, you don't need his weak love. So, when we kneel in the garden, together planting the marigolds, she teaches me the divine beauty of the grapevine, the way it twists and thrives. 
She warns me about the danger of pretty weeds. She lets the earthworms crawl across her fist and shows me how to love all things. Mom says, how is school? What she means is, remember how you held my hand when I walked you to kindergarten? I do. What she means is, why do you look so tired? What she means is, tell me what you've learned. So, when I'm on stage in my cap and gown, holding my diploma, the key to the rest of my life, hers is the first face I look for. She stands, grinning and clapping, eyes gleaming like she doesn't even need the camera because our memory of this moment is all we'll ever need. Mom says, take a coat. What she means is, I don't care if you think your outfit looks better without one, take a coat. What she means is, I don't want to watch you shiver. What she means is, I love you. So, when we're standing at the stoplight and I shiver, coatless, in the rain, she unzips her jacket and lets me back up into her. My spine against her breastbone, my head against her chest. She pulls the coat around, around us like she wants to swallow me whole, like she's trying to pull me back inside her, like she knows she's the only one who can ever keep me warm. Good evening. My name is Katherine Ellis, and I am the co-advisor for the class of 2020. I want to thank everyone who has helped put this evening together and for everyone who is viewing this banquet as one community of driven, beautiful, talented, and amazing women. Even though we could not be together in our usual way at the Latitudes restaurant on the beautiful Mystic River, I am glad that we were able to be together virtually so we could at least see one another in a Zoom meeting. That has been one of the hardest adjustments to make, not seeing everyone on a regular basis. If this pandemic has taught us anything, it has taught us to appreciate each other and the relationships that we have with one another. That is why this banquet is so meaningful. It reminds us that we have special bonds to one another, together or apart, and for all time. The Stonington High School Mother-Daughter Banquet has a long-standing tradition of celebrating the special relationships that mothers and daughters share. When we invite the staff, we point out that we are also celebrating the influence of positive female role models in our students' lives as well. I have been coming to the Mother-Daughter Banquet since I started teaching at Stonington High School to celebrate these relationships, as I sincerely hope that I have been able to be such a role model for at least one student in the graduating class. I take this responsibility seriously as I was blessed with many such relationships growing up myself. You see, my mother died when I was 10 years old, and although there will be always be a hole in my heart for her, I have been truly, truly blessed by the women who stepped up for me when I was growing up and beyond. Both my grandmothers, who were instrumental in helping my family through the first few very difficult months after my mother's death. My godmother, my great aunt, Aunt Agnes, who helped me utilize my faith to appreciate that even though I did not understand it, that God had a plan for my mother in heaven. My neighbor, Anita McElargy, who was there for me in all the years that followed. Rosemary Greeny, who I consider my surrogate mother, helped to raise me into the adult I am today. My fourth grade teacher, Pat Keon, and my fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Groves, who both helped me through that tough first year. My Girl Scout leader, Mrs. Sheffield, who looked out for me and held my hand during my first camp out away from home. I also salute the mothers who adopted me into their homes and families because of my friendship with their daughter. Madeline Feinsilver, who welcomed me into their home and honored me by celebrating the Passover Seder with them on several occasions. Helen Trachtenberg, who treated me like I was her own daughter, and I was always welcome in her home. And Pat Monaco, who taught me the value of humor and looking at the brighter side of things. As you can see, even after decades have gone by, those who have had the most impact on our lives are still with us. Of course, positive female role models do not come to an end once we have grown up. 
I consider myself lucky to have several friends who I consider to be my best friends because they are the closest thing I have to a sister. I know many of you have sisters, and whatever happens in life, they will be there for you through thick and thin. Many of my sisters, my best friends, have seen me through many trials and tribulations. High school, romances, college, careers, marriage, changing careers, etc. But we always say that we can just pick up the phone and seemingly start talking again, even after long periods of no communication, as if no time has passed at all. I know many of you have grown up together and will continue to remain friends over the course of your lifetime. I encourage you to stay in touch with each other, even though it does get more difficult when you are not present in each other's life all the time anymore, because these sisters are the family you have chosen for yourself in addition to the family you have been blessed with. I still keep in touch with my best friends from high school, Deborah Fine Silver Creel, Patty Monaco Sullivan, and Peggy Noon McIntyre among them, and even several decades later, it's as if we saw each other just last month. The same holds true for my sisters, my best friends from college, Pamela Porter, Adrian Unger, Dr. Kathleen Geiger, and E.J. Getz. I have also been blessed with my best friends from my first career at Mystic Aquarium, Kim Kieser, Tony Laschiavo, and Dr. Lisa Sanoban. I mention all of these women by name to honor them and the relationships that we have forged together and to hopefully impart on you the importance of female friendship as you go throughout your life. Your mother will be your first and truest friend for the rest of your life, but I hope you welcome the possibility of more true friends to come. I know some of you have stepmothers in your life, as do I. My stepmother Jean came into my life when I was in college and has loved me as her daughter from early on in our relationship. I have to admit that I was reticent to accept her into my life when I was already grown and felt that I no longer needed someone to fill that place in my heart. She did not marry my father for many years, but when they did finally marry, I was ready to have a mother in my life again, and I love her for opening up her heart to me, even when I was not quite ready for it. She has been there to support me through many of my adult challenges and has been a sage advisor. Once we get past this pandemic, and we will, I intend to visit my parents and tell her so. I read an article in the Oprah magazine about mothers and daughters, and I knew I would draw from it some inspiration for my speech this evening. In that article, they talked about how it is possible to have many mothers. I am the embodiment of that statement. There's the woman who gave birth to you, and then there are all the women who raised you up. While I know we are here to celebrate the unbreakable bond you have with your mother, I want you to also recognize and remember all the other women who have helped to raise you and will continue to do so for the rest of your lifetime. Women have an infinite capacity to love and to share their love with others. I know you will be a part of this sisterhood forevermore. Being your class advisor has been one of the great privileges of my teaching career. I have come to know many of you as students in my classes, but also through the many clubs, sports, and activities that you participate in. You constantly amaze me at your ability to balance all of your many school responsibilities with your extracurricular activities and your family and social lives. Your drive to succeed is unmatched, and yet your empathy for others is unparalleled. The spirit in this class is unbelievable, and I will miss each and every one of you after you graduate. I have had the good fortune to be a co-advisor with two wonderful and talented women. Caitlin Johnson worked with me for the freshman and sophomore years, and Rosa Maria Berger has worked with me for the junior and senior years, and I am grateful for their partnerships. Mrs. Berger and I have been heartbroken over the events of this year. First, the threat of Triple E, which pushed back our powder puff game by about a month, plus its huge impact on sports, and now the coronavirus. This was certainly not the senior year we had envisioned for everyone, but it in no way diminishes the true love we hold for your class and your families. While you will be finishing your senior year in a manner which no one could have ever imagined, we hope that you will look back on these times many years from now 
as a time when you were able to strengthen your relationships with your family, and as a time when we came together as a global community to overcome an unimaginable adversary. This pandemic has taught us all how to communicate in different ways, like Zoom meetings, Skype, or FaceTime, or simply by the old school methods of just making a phone call or writing a card or letter. Even in this uncertain time, we can be grateful for the small things that we tend to take for granted or push aside because of busy schedules. Time with our family, time with our friends, our health, and a true sense of community. I want to close this evening by saying how much I admire all of the women with us this evening, or who may be watching this video after the fact. Mothers, you have done a spectacular job raising incredible young women who are poised to enter the next stage of, in their lives, well prepared to face any challenges on their way to success. Daughters, I regard many of you as if you were my own children, and I cannot wait to see what you will accomplish in your future. I like to think that when I hear the proverb, it takes a village to raise a child, that we have all had at least a small hand in your upbringing, and I am grateful for the privilege. I thank all of you for coming together this evening to celebrate all of the women in our lives. Special thanks go to our event committee, whose efforts really made this evening come together, and very special. Hope Soul, Claire Anderson, Allison Marseglia, Lily Anderson, Grace Conti, Kyra Wiltshire, Cole Wilbur, River Brobarge, Eliza and Ellen Gilbert, and Lucy Chumowitz, our Poet Laureate. I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your evening and that you take some pictures with your mom in the backyard amongst the flowering shrubs to commemorate our time together this evening. I look forward to seeing you all at graduation. Have a good evening.